Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Living Word Broadcast. I'm Clell Tony, sitting in for Billy Joe Gentry. I'm that adopted kid he sometimes talks about that lives way out in Arizona. Billy Joe married the wife and I over 30 years ago, and life has transplanted us all across this great country. And thanks to Billy Joe's Living Word Broadcast, we've been able to keep up with his doings ever since. He and his show inspired me to do some of my own, and now I even run my own radio station. It's called theporchradio.org, where we play only the bluegrass gospel all day and night, 24-7, 365. So if you like bluegrass music, because I know we love the gospel here on KNEO, go check us out at theporchradio.org, just like it sounds. But never forget where you come from. I, too, grew up here listening to KNEO, and I know what a blessing it can be to hear such great speakers that Mark Taylor and his staff put together for us and have done through so many years now. Well, enough about me. Oh, wait, one more thing. Remember, imitation is the best form of flattery, and this is my best attempt to serve Billy Joe's show well. That being said, let's get started with the program. First, let's ask the Lord's blessing on our broadcast. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with our soldiers and their families wherever they are in the world, our sick and shut in, and those that care for them, and our world leaders, Lord, press on their hearts to fulfill your will here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. So, since we're on the radio, our show today is going to be about listening for or hearing the Word of God. But before we get started with the music, I'd like to thank our sponsors. McQueen Funeral Home of Wheaton, Missouri, Foreign Funeral Home of Asphalt. If you have a need or a pre-need, they're great people and have been around, well, almost forever. And Charles and Leona Goswick will be playing one of his songs later. Now, what say ye that we get started with a verse before the song? Starts in Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, keep your father's commandment, and forsake not your mother's teaching. Now this first song sings a story about when we might have heard first about God in heaven. So here we go with, and remember I like bluegrass, (laughs) the bluegrass cardinals singing the first time I heard about heaven. The first time I heard about heaven Mama was smiling and rocking my cradle and singing Won't it be wonderful There I can still see her happy tears And I can still hear my mother in prayer Now if the walls are not jasper And if the streets are not gold If my mansion should just be As long as it's heaven, it's home The only thing my eyes belong to vision The only thing my heart needs to know Is that somewhere on the hills of Mount Zion The king sitting high on his throne The king sitting high on his throne What a great old number that was. That was the Bluegrass Cardinals with The First Time I Heard About Heaven. Let's keep the music going with another one. Here's one of my wife's favorite groups. This is Nickel Creek singing their song, God Will Listen to You. Listen to you 
when the sky turns black and your thoughts turn blue, He will listen to you. He will listen to you. Ooh, always listen to you. He understands how His children feel, and He will listen to you. What a great song. He understands how his children feel, and he will listen to you. Amen. That was Chris Teal on the mandolin there. He took over for Garrison Keeler on A Prairie Home Companion. Some of you may like that show. Uh Uh-oh. Due to copyright things, they have to call it Live From Here now. Anyway, that was Nickel Creek singing God Will Listen to You. You might say... Mr. Preacher, how are we supposed to know this? Well, 1 John 5.14 tells us, And this is the confidence that we have towards Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Amen. Let's keep the music going with another number that keeps us pointed in the right direction. Here is the Lonesome River Band singing, Listen to the Word of God. As you live your life each day, don't let Satan's evil way lead you into his wicked world of sin. You can learn right from wrong through the holy word of God, and he will show you that you will only listen to him. Listen to the word of God. Is not he the voice that calls you? He will lead you to paradise. Hold him in a warm embrace, feel his ever loving grace. Don't wait till it's too late, or you'll be lost to the other side.
Lord is not Heed the voice that calls you He will lead you to paradise Hold him in a warm embrace Feel his ever loving grace Don't wait till it's too late Or you'll be lost to the other side That's some mighty fine picking and praising and singing there, wasn't it? The Lonesome River Band singing Listen to the Word of God. Part of it went, He's the voice that calls you and He will lead you to paradise. Amen? Well, after that, let's take a breath and thank our sponsors. That's Charles and Leona Goslick, McQueen Funeral Home of Wheaton, Missouri, Foreign Funeral Home of Cassville, and let me tell you about the Living Word Mission, too. It's two miles east of Longview in the community of Simcoe. Just turn north there off 76 and you'll see the church right there on the right. Sunday school's at 10, worship hour at 10.30, and 6 on Sunday evenings. And if you listen in here on KNEO, drop us a line or a prayer request, or just let us know that you're listening and enjoying the show, or not. Send them cards or letters to Billy Joe Gentry, 46 North Thor Road, right here in Rocky Comfort, Missouri, 64861. He loves to hear from his listeners. Now, how about us get back to the music? I play this next number in honor of my grandfather. I never got to hear him preach, but I can only imagine that this song depicts him pretty good. He was an old-time preacher man that dug a whole bunch of coal out of the ground to make the best life he could for his home and family. Here is Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers singing, Listen, they're playing my song. Anyway, here they are. He stood at the altar with his Bible in hand Never one time complaining He was God's chosen man And picked by the master To watch over the sheep In a second hand suit From the Bible he'd preach With dust on his collar And under his nails He worked out a living Mining coal in the hills he never had much, but the Lord would provide. He was richer by far on the day that he died. Every Sunday my mind wanders back to the hills, to a preacher I see standing there. In my mind I Putting his own needs way back on the shelf Building his riches in the kingdom above Every step of his journey he walked in God's love Every Sunday my mind wanders back to the hills To a preacher I see standing there In my mind I can still hear my granddaddy preach And we'll meet one day soon over there That was Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers singing Listen, They're Playing Our Song. Don't they do a great job? Anyway, our Bible lesson for today takes us to Proverbs 22:17 through 19. It reads, Incline your ear and hear the words of the wise, and apply your heart to my knowledge, for it will be pleasant if you keep them within you. If all of them are ready on your lips, 
that your trust may be in the Lord. I have made them known to you today, even to you. You notice he says, incline, not recline. You know how when a respectable person is speaking to you, you tend to lean in to hear better because you know you want to receive the knowledge that they're trying to convey? So you tend to lean in so that it's clear enough that you can take it straight to heart. No speculation, no worrying. He continues by saying it will be pleasant to keep them, the words that you have learned, on your lips, ready to speak. These things will show that your trust has been put in our Lord. Going further, he says, I have made them known to you today. How is that? By the ability to read the word. And then saying, even to you. Yes, that means to everyone his word is available just for the reading. This is how most of us begin to hear the word of God. With reading, we can begin to know what we can expect to hear. Now, after we start hearing, you know we're going to be asking questions. That's where prayer comes in. And once we start praying, we kind of expect to hear some kind of answer. And we are assured that as long as we are praying, He hears and will listen to you. That's what the song we just heard earlier was singing about. It's in tune with 1 John 5.14 that told us, If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The flip side of that coin shows up when James says about how to know who you are hearing. James 3.14-17 through says, But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not. That means don't feel good about it. And lie not against the truth. That means don't tell yourself it's okay. This wisdom descends not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. James went on to warn us in chapter 4, verse 3, where he says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. You may think God wants you to have that biggest, bestest barbecue grill there, so you can have the admiration of your neighbors. Well, friend, I don't think that message come from God. So if you're expecting results... You need to be asking for things according to His will. In other words, you don't want to be thinking about anything that even resembles things like prideful, greedy, lustful, envious, gluttonous, wrathful, or laziness. Does them sound familiar? Yeah, but you might be saying, Mr. Preacher, you just took all the fun out of it. To that I say, simply pray for things that will glorify God. And even ask Him for His guidance and help for you to be a part of that. Something like, pray for a fish that will feed your family today, versus a fish bigger than the one your neighbor caught last week. Boy, that was a whopper. Oh, but I digress. Then be receptive. Open every means you have to hear. And then be patient. Now, while you're waiting... That devil knows this is a great time to jump in and try to deceive you. So this is not time to be scared or fearful. There is plenty ways to know who you're hearing from. Like John says in 1 John 4, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. You're probably saying, Mr. Preacher, how am I supposed to try spirits? Just remember, we just read the best list in James 3.17, where it tells us the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated, that means inspected, full of mercy and good fruits, without penalty and without hypocrisy. You say, I think I got a message from God, you can ask. Is it pure at heart? 
does it sound like a respectable, God-fearing person would do such a thing? This may be a little harder to discern, as there are fewer of those real people around to get to know, but they get easier, like the next one. Is it peaceable and considerate? Does it tell you to be good or bad? God would never tell you uh, to d be vengeful or th anything like that to someone. Does it tell you how to be a bridge builder or a bridge burner? Here's another one. Is it full of grace and mercy? Does what you're hearing find fault or is it judgmental? Or does it show the good and beauty in your subject? Does it help you realize or learn anything about what you're praying for? Here's another one. Is it impartial and sincere? Is it something that you would do for anyone without reservations? For instance, is it telling you to be a, the Good Samaritan or is it telling you to be more priestly and walk on by? Which one do you think Jesus would tell you? Even though there's many ways to test your message from God, this may be the best one. Is it submittable? Meaning, can you take it to your brethren at church and would they say, yeah, that sounds good? Or would you say, heck no, I don't want them to know I was thinking of that. Well, guess where that message come from? Now, I know it's been said, in multitude there is safety. But friend, that don't mean you can keep hitting up all your church brethren and sisters until you find the one that will affirm your message. The first answer is usually like what Pilate said. What I have written, I have written. So if you have to hit up all of your hundred church brethren to find one or two that'll say yes, what do you think the true answer was? Was it submittable? Would it handle scrutiny? Well, I see my time's running out, so let's sum it up. There are many ways to hear from God. When you are immersed in His Word, every pore in your body will soak up and consume His Word. Keep them to your lips to use readily and plentifully. Just like moving to a foreign country where you don't know the language and you even get to learn the dialect versus just learning words. Couldn't we all use, in fact, don't we all need an in-house advisor that could answer all the questions we are faced with on a daily basis? Not just words to use, but how best to carry out our lives to glorify God and Jesus Christ. So if it's been a while, or you have never heard the Word of God, I encourage you to find yourself a Bible-believing church, sit in the pews, and pray that God speaks to you and guides you to enjoy the life He wants you to have. Well, clock on the wall says it's about time to go, so let's close with a prayer. Let's close with Psalm 25, 4 and 5. It says, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. And Lord, we also ask that you come into the heart of that man, woman, boy, or girl who needs you now. Help them to hear you calling them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I like to save the best for last, so here is an artist I have had the privilege seeing playing and singing in person right there at the Living Word Mission Church. And I'm here to tell you he sounds just as great in person as he does in that fancy recording studio that he recorded this next number. So now I'll thank you all for tuning in to the Living Word broadcast. Tune in next week, same time, same station. Now here's Charlie Goswick to sing us out to the end of the show with his song, Jesus is Coming. Y'all come back now. You hear? One of these days without warning, it might be early in the morning, Jesus will come again and time will be no more. 
With a sound like rolling thunder, our graves are busted asunder, and the dead in Christ will rise to meet the Lord. Jesus is coming, my brother. Tell your family, friends, and neighbors, Jesus is coming again some great day. And when we meet him by and by, then he'll take us to our home on high. Are you ready for the judgment day? When my earthly life is over, and into my grave I'm lowered, well, I'll take with me a Savior that I know. He'll be with me to the end. Yes, he's a great and wonderful friend. With his blood, he has sealed my soul. Jesus is coming, my brother. Tell your family, friends, and neighbors, Jesus is coming again some great day. And when we meet him by and by, then he'll take us to our home on high. Are you ready for the judgment? won't be any sinners there come right now and by jesus you'll be saved and when this world's not any longer and you're carried up over yonder then you'll be ready for the judgment day jesus is coming my brother tell your family friends and neighbors jesus is coming again some great day when we meet him by and by, then he'll take us to a home on high. 